Hi, my name is Mark. And my name's Laurie, and welcome to Valley View Retreat, our wonderful home in the Sierra de las Nieves Mountains here in southern Spain. We bought our four acre almond and olive farm in 2001. And we moved into our modified geodesic dome in 2004. Uh, it's uh, quite dry where we are and very, very difficult to grow things, so we tend not to be self-sufficient. Uh, in order to uh, supplement our income, we work seasonally in the destination wedding industry. I work as a wedding guitarist. And I work as a wedding hair and makeup artist. In the off season, we run various courses and you can see some of those on our website. Recently, we built a tiny house uh, in order to help supplement our income. So, uh, what's our channel about? Our channel is about uh, the challenges <laughs> face living off grid. And also our continuing journey to develop income streams to help us continue to live in this beautiful place. Uh, we hope you enjoy our, our videos. Welcome to our channel. So we have to thank you all. We have just reached... 300 subscribers! Yay! Which is amazing. I must say that uh, it's you. been a very, very rapid increase from our first 100 to 300. And in actual fact, I think we're at uh, over 320 at the moment. So thank you all so much. We're so glad that you're uh, enjoying our little videos. Uh, we also want to offer a huge thanks to Andy and Katie from the Spanish Homestead. Uh, their mention brought us a, a lot of new subscribers. Uh, if you didn't come to us through them, please check them out. Uh, it's called, their channel is called the Spanish Homestead. So in this week's video... We've been uh, getting some plants together, doing some landscaping in the tiny house and just getting it prepared to take some photos. We've also been desperately trying to collect uh, some rainwater, the last rainwater that we need, fill the last tanks for the summer, and uh, it hasn't really been cooperating. We've had grey skies, we've had a little bit of rain, but pff, not, not really getting anywhere with that. Um, and at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what the costs are involved in our particular type of off-grid living. Um, and anybody who's considering doing what it is that we do, it's worth hanging around to have a, a, a listen to that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little look at how the tiny house is uh, progressing. Uh, and we've reached that stage in the video where we're actually going to talk about the costs of our particular type of off-grid living. What's important to remember here is that we are not self-sufficient. We did make some attempts to be self-sufficient early on. Um, and I think I've covered that in one of the other videos and I'll, I'll put a card to that up there. Um, our land is not very productive and we have a real problem with water. Uh, so we have decided that in order to continue to live here, or we did decide, that we would need to supplement uh, our income. And that meant that we started working in the destination wedding industry. So what are our expenses on a day-to-day a -day basis? 
the first thing is that because we actually work in the destination wedding industry, we need two cars. Yeah. All right. So how many times have we worked the same wedding in all the years that we've been doing Twice. This? Twice. Twice out of hundreds of weddings uh, where we actually booked for the same wedding. Uh, so the one car thing just would not work. Oh, now the f- yeah. yeah. So the fact that we have two cars means that you double up on that particular expense. Now bear in mind that we have no mortgage and we have no rent. So our cars tend to be one of our biggest expenses yeah. on a monthly basis. So the insurances on our cars run about six hundred euro a year and the taxes are about two fifty. About two fifty. Yeah. So after the cars our next biggest expense would probably be well food but leaving food aside for the moment our next biggest expense would actually be our phone and internet so our phone bill is 24 a month and that's for the two of us for two phones and our internet is 36 36 so between the phone the internet that's 60 euro a month which isn't the end of the world um, we use gas for cooking and um, when it gets very cold we use gas for uh, supplementing our fire before the heat builds up inside. So we buy about, I suppose, two bottles of gas, maybe a month, which is about 18, 18 euro, is it? So yeah. 36. Yeah. Uh, 36 euro a month. So 36 euro a month on gas. It's probably less than that because we don't use that much in the summer, but we're in around there. <coughs> okay, now when we're actually working, um, up until the beginning of the coronavirus thing. Um, our social security payment was horrendous. Uh, mine, because I'm over 50, uh, runs at uh, nearly 300 euro a month. And Laurie's works at 270, is that right? No, it's, it's higher, it's, it's 285. About 285. Yeah. So the social security payment, which gives you health coverage and hopefully some um, uh, pension benefits, uh, is a very, very significant Uh, expense Mm. however once the coronavirus started destination weddings stopped and Laurie and I neither of us have worked a wedding since October of 2019 that's correct yeah uh, which is horrendous so eventually we had to stop paying the social security because we had no income coming in and we were paying a huge amount of money Mm. so what we do have is private health insurance yeah and our private health insurance runs at about yeah. 150 euro a month. Yeah. And that ensures that if we're ill, that we can get looked after. And that's an absolute necessity. If you're not paying social security, you must have some form of health insurance. Yeah. So if we're to look at those, the next thing that we have to look at is food. Because we're not self-sufficient, our food bill is about, 250 euro a month yeah yeah that's reasonable yeah about 250 euro a month so when you add all of that together what you're going to end up with on a monthly basis is somewhere around around about 500 euro about 496 500 euro a month so that's our absolute basic needs mm. for 500 euro a month that's before you put fuel in the car before you've traveled anywhere or had any sort of you know entertainment or other expense and it's not looking at replacement costs for things like the cars like the solar system like the skin on the dome or any repairs or replacements absolute basic mm. 500 euro mm. a month living the way that we live um, and that adds up to obviously six thousand, six thousand euro a year, which is very good. Which is very good in one way. Yeah. In another way, if you're not making anything, it, it's it's still a significant amount of money. Yeah. If we ran this as an almond and olive farm, our income from these four acres, on a, a year by year basis, would be somewhere between eleven hundred and eighteen hundred euro a year. That's it, yeah. which would still leave us the bones of, you know, four, four and a half thousand euros short on our yearly expenses. And that's why we you know, do our, 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 the jobs that we actually do. If we were in a position to be somewhat self-sufficient and we're providing most of our food ourselves, really those savings, because obviously you can't produce well you can but it's really difficult to produce things like 
uh, soap, detergent, um, and then things like you know salt, pepper, cleaning products, Spices and stuff, yeah. all of those things. Um, so the most that we could expect is that we would save somewhere in and around a hundred and fifty euro a month which would leave us still with an expenditure of 100 euro a month. Mm. So even if we were self-sufficient, <coughs> to some extent, food-wise, the saving that we would actually make would still leave us 3,000 euro short. Mm. The bones are 3,000 euro short on a year-by-year -year basis. And that's before you actually look at things like our property tax or the car fuel or all of the other things. Mm. And property tax for us would be very reasonable for other people, depending on where you are and whatever, somewhere between maybe 200 and 500 euro a year. That's the situation that we're in. So we can't really survive without some external form. Absolutely. Of yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people, the way they sort that is they have some part of their property that they rent out. Mm. And if you're renting it out on a long-term basis, you'd be making what? for something like our tiny house a month oh a month 300 about 300 a month mm. now that would give you three <coughs> three thousand six hundred euro a year and before you actually start to pay tax on that and before you did the repairs or whatever else that looks fine and that in itself would give you your very basic necessities but that's all it would do mm. it wouldn't future proof you and if something goes wrong or you don't have somebody staying in your tiny house or whatever, you're, you're back to needing money again. So it's very important that before you jump into something like a, an off-grid lifestyle, that you've got a very clear plan on where your income is actually going it's to really come important. from. And that you have the skills and have developed the skills uh, to be able to supplement your income with something else. Mm. Um, as I say... We work in the off grid, at the off grid. We work in the destination wedding industry, which has been wonderful to us. Except Absolutely a few years amazing. ago, we had a problem with, uh, what was it? Which one? The volcano. <laughs> yeah, the volcano. <clears throat> which one? So the volcano erupted in northern Europe, which spread an ash cloud, and flights couldn't uh, were stopped running. Yeah. And when the flights stopped running. It our weddings didn't us happen straight away. And when our weddings didn't happen, we had no, no income, and it yeah. left to see you know based a season short yeah. on on income, and that's something that you can you know the only way that you can plan for that is to ensure that you have some sort of reserves, some sort of cash reserves mm -hmm. that cover those those periods of time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this time around, with the coronavirus, we had no warning until the beginning of last year's season that the whole thing was going to cancel and we didn't have a single wedding last year and it looks like we're not going to have a single wedding this year up until if we're lucky August, August. or September of this year yeah. this means that it's nearly two years since we had uh, that income our income from our, our destination wedding um, uh, businesses so that left us in a very very difficult situation and thankfully we keep our overhead very low Laurie's really frugal with the way she spends money and very diligent about the way she saves money mm. and it's literally our saved money and our very low overhead <clears throat> that's allowed us to survive this long um, we're very careful about the money that we spend um, and it's very hard, but I mean, the the great thing, sorry, I'm choking up, but the great thing is that we were already in the habit of being frugal, as Mark says, and um, it's just carried on really through this time. So being in that habit has actually served a purpose, you know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it has. And uh, you know, when we started building the tiny house, it was before coronavirus actually hit so our idea was we build a tiny house and in mm. the off season we'd make some income out of that people who want to come here for cycling or for walking in the national park or for our uh, residential courses uh, i teach uh, guitar residential guitar courses nice. so the tiny house was um was built with with that in mind 
uh, unfortunately, because no one could actually travel or move around, because we were in local lockdowns, it slowed the build down, firstly. But secondly, you know, you're building it with no idea of when it's possible to make an income from yeah. it. Yeah. And that left us in a situation where the likes of starting this channel um, in the hope that we would get to enough subscribers um, and enough view time so that we could make some income from YouTube and starting some new projects which aren't actually dependent on people traveling mm. to try and develop new income streams. Mm. Um, that's where, where those ideas actually developed from. And we're hoping that, you know, as time progresses, we'll have covered with those income streams every conceivable eventuality. Uh, however, <laughs> no matter what it is that you conceive, the world can turn around and kick you even harder. So we live in hope, uh, but very important that for anybody who's considering this type of lifestyle, that you do take these warnings on board. You have to have multiple income yeah. streams in order to be able to do this successfully and mm. not end up in serious trouble. Mm. Yeah. It's a good, uh, it's a good lesson. Okay, now we've given you what our basic uh, expenditures are. And that's what they would be if this was the only property that we actually had. But because we live in our geodesic dome off grid, we can't actually be registered as living here. And that's created a major problem because you have to be registered in a local town hall in order to buy a car, pay your taxes, to do a whole range of things here. And that was a major problem for us early on. We had to literally be registered at friends of ours' houses in order to be able to conduct our businesses. Mm -hmm. In order not to put them in the awkward situation and to give ourselves some freedom, Laurie managed to save enough money so that we could buy a derelict village house in a nearby village. And because it was uh, an actual house in a nearby village, we were able to register as living there. So we're on that padron and that allows us to have all of the paperwork that we actually need to conduct our businesses. Yeah. Uh, in order to buy that house, apart from the money that, that was put in in cash, we had to take a personal loan. They wouldn't give us a mortgage, uh, there's no point in trying to explain the Spanish banking system. Uh, we didn't qualify for a mortgage, which would have kept our repayments at 70 or 80 yeah. euro uh, yeah. a month. But we did qualify for a personal loan, um, which had repayments of 270 euro per month. Somebody explained to me how banks work. I don't know. Anyway, um, so we do have that extra expense. Yeah. Uh, we have a loan of 270 euro a month that we have to pay. And because we have that house and we needed to have utility bills, we still have the standing charge on the electricity to pay and the local taxes to pay, what they call EB for your yeah. your bin collection and water, your water and property services, tax or whatever, yeah. uh, which adds up to about 300 and another 320 or 330 euro. Uh, um, it's actually 318, <laughs> an extra 318 euro a month, um, which means that our actual outgoings before we put petrol in the car and everything else are 814 euro a month which means that we would need 9,800 euro in order to survive uh, a year without any income. Uh, thank goodness we live a frugal uh, lifestyle and are very diligent about um, putting any extra money that we have uh, away. Yeah. Uh, it's allowed us to survive f this long um, and hopefully it'll <laughs> allow us to survive until our income streams open up again. Uh, but there you are. That's the reality of our situation. And we've been as honest as we can. Um, bear in mind that there are some things that we cannot discuss on a on a public forum um, for various reasons. Um, and those things are, are, are things that we will cover on our Patreon channel, where it's a, a very it tight group of people that yeah. we're actually talking to. Um, uh, so if you have any very specific uh, questions, um, then on our Patreon channel is the best place to ask those. However, we'll answer anything that we can without getting ourselves into trouble. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much.
Thank um, you. For our 320 you. something subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, it really helps. And it really does. The click help. costs nothing. I the love click that. Click costs nothing. So yeah. please, Thank if you're you. watching this and you haven't subscribed, now is the time. <laughs> click the button. Okay. Take care until next week. Bye bye. bye.